afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to AVX Live. I'm Joe Gilderson, President of Corporate Audiovisual Services, and my co-host, Brian Finch. Would you like to introduce yourself today? Yes, my name is Ryan Finch. Thank you, Joe. All right, good. Well, you don't usually get to do that, so I thought maybe today. <laughs> you caught me off guard. I wasn't prepared. Today was the day. I could have had a whole bio ready. Episode 33. 33. You finally made it to the next level. This is it. This is the next <laughs> level. Took you 33 episodes. But either way, <laughs> we're here, and uh, we should be in 1080p today. <whistles> big time. That's a big deal. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it already looks sharper on my end. I'm, I'm not know. sure about everybody else. I don't know if you need all the resolution for this. Well, if we check into some of our clips later, we'll we'll have to determine that. <laughs> oh, no. But either way. Uh, today is an unscripted episode whatsoever. So we are just like, we're winging it right off the cuff, right off the cuff today, because we still have a lot of virtual events and a lot of in-person events. This is like our second season. It happens right before uh, the holidays. Everybody breaks for the holidays. But for the first two weeks of December, it's usually very hectic. And that is holding true as we have like maybe five virtual events in the next 24 hours. But uh we're, we're almost there in all of it, so we're close. Uh, Mr. Finch, do you want to tell people how they can be entertained by us? Yes, this one I know. Uh, mm. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Bam. No, not Instagram. Wow, I blew it. YouTube, Facebook, oh, LinkedIn. Blew. There we go. You, did, you didn't bring the banner up soon enough, so I didn't have my notes in front of me. Anyway, those are the three channels that you can find us on every Wednesday at 1 p.m. And, of mm. course, if you're there... We would really appreciate a like, a comment, maybe a share, and of course, smash the subscribe button. Wow. That oh. would be very much appreciated. Show some love on those channels, and we will try to keep coming to you every Wednesday at 1 o'clock with more special guests like the one we have today. This is so exciting. So exciting that we're doing it for a second time, but in a different way. Today, we are going to bring back, I don't know if... Many of you remember, but we introduced Alexa Lilos just a few months back. And she was brand new to the team, and we brought her on, as well as Marissa Madonia, who is not with us today because she's at an ADO event, Association of Development Officers. Great, great group, helping a lot of nonprofits locally. And she's with them today for their luncheon in person. Is that IRL. IRL. Yes, IRL. I knew there was I'm a, so glad I corrected you before you inevitably blew it. I was it. about to blow it. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, so we're bringing Alexa, Alexa back so that she can tell us about her first six months and what it really means to be part of the corporate AV team. Ryan, you want to uh, bring her in from backstage? Boom. There we go. Man, that was good. <laughs> Hello. That hey, Alexa, Hello. how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you guys? It seems that you're in the green room. The very, very green room, yes. I'm a little disappointed that there's no virtual background behind you. You know, I, mean, you I had everything ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we really could have added one for you because that <laughs> is like green screen green almost, you know? <laughs> I, was that done intentionally, by the way? I don't think I've ever asked that. Uh, to be green screen? No, it was done as a green room, but not as a green screen. Ah, okay. So you went we literal still, with the green room. We were still IRL before when we painted that room. So. Fair, fair. But we could certainly just paint it green screen uh, green at this point. It would probably be fun. It's a thought. It's a thought. And then Alexa can have wonderful, you know, virtual backgrounds like yeah. you and your tiki bar and all the <laughs> other things. Do you need to that, see it? I would love to see it, actually. I, I, I didn't be. load it in on here, but I mean, I could. Just a few clicks away. <laughs> it's only a few clicks away. And we're in the Bahamas, baby. <laughs> Okay, so Alexa, before working at Corporate AV, my understanding, unless you lied in your resume, was that you worked at several nonprofits and you also worked as an event planner. Yes, that is correct. I did not lie on my resume. Good. But um, yeah, I, I was mainly in the events world. I did a little bit of wedding coordinating, um, some for a nonprofit in Rockland, so I've always kind of been in the events world, but never on the other side of things. So I've definitely learned a whole lot in this first six months here, uh, all the kind of backstage of what goes into it from an AV standpoint. And 
is it is it interesting? Oh yeah, for sure. It's different what, from what you know I would originally think because when you're in the mindset of planning an event, you're going full force. Okay, we'll have this. You know the the small details. You know who's going to stand here? What are we going to do? But you don't realize how much goes into the actual um, logistics of how things actually need to be set up. You might have like a crazy idea of what you want to do, but actually bringing that to fruition takes a little bit of time to really map out. So it's been so, good. To so would you say you're, you're a lot more in the details? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely into the details, but I'm expanding my horizon and being able to have the detailed background and now see the, you know, the AV side of it and really how those two go hand in hand. It, it all brings it together. Now, when you were on that side, and, and we won't even just say nonprofit, but in the whole event planning side, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter what sector this exact sector. Did you realize that audiovisual and production and lighting were one of the most expensive parts of the event planning cycle? No, I, I definitely didn't. I mean, in the nonprofit part of things, I I wasn't the person dealing with the, like the direct financial side of like how the event went, but you know, seeing it from this side it is a big portion of the cost for, you know, how is your event going to be portrayed? Like how high tech do you want it? How much lighting, which is a big part of the cost as well. It, it all plays into that, uh, you know, how big do you want your event to look like really show show business or do you want to just kind of, you know, cordial and everyone's just together. It's more low key. Well, we, we talked uh, a lot about uh, production level. I think is what you're alluding yeah. to there, yeah. right? And that is one of the early things that we need to try to identify. And you know, coming from what we'd call client side, you have a vision in mind, and that is kind of the production level that shapes the production level. And it's kind mm -hmm. of like up to us to work it out, you know, and, and try to pull it out of, of them at times. Because yes. again, it's like what's in here doesn't necessarily translate, you know, uh, uh, over the, you know, sometimes over Zoom or over a phone call. And so that, that ends up being part of the process, right? Yeah, exactly. So Ryan, are you saying that sometimes it takes some, some thought? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So for all of you who may be watching right now or watching later, Alexa has some uh, some hidden skills and talents that we didn't know about that kind of show up every once in a while, like a happy little surprise. And one of those, I guess, is being a GIF maker and and taking videos. Now you did of not you. say gift. No, GIF. <laughs> GIF. Gotcha. Dot G I F. Some well, people call also it GIF. referred to as a GIF. Yeah. No, no, that is incorrect. I don't She's say also that. Some a, a, do, though. Uh, a pronunciation expert as well. See, there's another GIF, one of GIF, those. Whatever you want to call little it. Little surprises. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for for making that gift. There were a few others we chose not to uh, to share with you all today, and uh, I think we're just going to leave it at that. So there you go. There's my there's my thinker pose. Well, I think the whole point of the thinker pose oh, no. was to highlight the fact that sometimes you have to really put a lot of thought into the design and the layout. And that is that is part of what leads into expenses. But that's also how you get the execution. You get that great result that everybody's looking for. Uh, I guess. Do you think AV is worth it? I mean, I think it really elevates your show. So if you want the show to, you know, you're picturing it in your head as this big thing, you really need a, a good AV company like ourselves to perform and, you know, get you the right equipment to bring your vision to life. So it's definitely important. I would say probably the most important thing as you're starting to really plan and pull it all together. I like to think it's the most important thing, but I'm a little biased. <laughs> I was going to say, good answer. <laughs> no, but that's, uh, I I'm sure it's one of those things you just never thought of that because it's not, you yeah, know, right. you're on the other side of whatever the experience is. You just, you know, you just, you don't look at it through those glasses, through that lens. Yeah. You, know? you have the tunnel vision of like, okay, got to get through these steps and then the event. But really when it comes down to it, when you work with the AV company, you're, you know, you're learning how, how do those things actually play a factor in what the day is going to pan out to be. So even I think going to site visits has really been a very good way for me to see how that all pans out. 
um, things such as like if your event's going to be outside, lighting wise, how much light's coming in? Can you use a monitor? Can you use a projector? You know, all those things. Is there power source um, for if there's a hybrid event? If it's Zoom, what's the Wi-Fi speed? All these are really important questions that before I maybe wasn't really thinking too much about. You know, you show up to a space, you're like, wow, this is beautiful. But when you get down to the AV side, you're like, oh, actually, you need to really pay attention to these things and take note of them. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, again, the devil's in the details. And, uh, well, it's, it's funny, actually, speaking of details, we, we got a, a comment from the, from the audience here, our friend Julia Emmerich. Uh, apparently, I misspoke earlier. It's pronounced GIF, not GIF, just like <laughs> peanut butter. What do you mean just like the – oh, GIF. I get it now. Okay. Oxford English Dictionary accepts both pronunciations. I stopped there. So what we, I guess, determined was that we're both right. But anyway – details really matter see how i brought that right back brought it right back we're doing I mean, it live uh, i don't know i i you know i gotta side with with julia again because i heard gift too i mean oh man i mean it's that time of year right well you know i mean ryan did you notice just how festive it is back here yeah and also alexa uh, i did not know where those came from and until joe came around uh, i don't know if it was last night or the night before but he was like wow you didn't even unwrap it <laughs> I'm like, I, I didn't even know who, I didn't know where it came from, but yes. I mean, like it was festive. just going to die right there on his, on his desk. There's, right. really, well, there's a, a lot of holiday spirit in the office. I mean, Joe's desk with the lights, like everything is, it's really nice. We, I mean, we, we are a lighting company. This is true. <laughs> we're a lighting company now. There you go. <laughs> well, look, it's all about having warmth and personality. Wow. All around the office. So well, nice you wouldn't really know that my desk shines that, but shines that well okay. well we you, know, you should have brought it. yourself a uh, a gif and we could have put it on screen to show them this is true right? I'll, I'll know for next time now well, you know you got to adequately prepare that's all <laughs> i mean <laughs> i would expect you to bring something to the table here that's all but uh either way you know the fact that you're you're learning these things in just a few months i mean that that shows you just how much there is to it but You've, you've been on many different sites. You've been on all different projects so far. And, you know, you've done a great job with it. I'm sure part of that is having that experience coming from the event planning side. Right. It's like having that um, kind of like prior knowledge of how does an event kind of go in general, like a run of show. But then once that all, you know, comes into how is the AV actually working with the show you want to be shown. So it, it is very important. I feel like, I feel like it gives me a little bit more of an advantage similar with Marissa because she came from, you know, nonprofit events. You kind of have the best of both worlds now, because like I said, the two play hand in hand. So you really get to see it all come together as one. Oh, absolutely. And now one thing that I'm sure you've heard us talk a lot about is managing expectations, right? Would you say yeah. that that's more or less kind of what we're talking about, where you, you come from the other side, so you might have a little bit easier managing those expectations and what right. they thought was going to happen is, in fact, what happens, right? Yeah, that's very true. Someone might come up with a really, you know, very interesting, creative idea, but is it actually, you know, can we actually make that happen for them? It's important to kind of really flush out everything, you know, that you see, this is what I want to happen, but is it actually going to be possible? We don't want to let people down. We want them to feel like everything was successful. So that's important to really take note of as well. And as far as from the purely the nonprofit side, since you know we do so much work with nonprofit organizations, what, what do you think is different about the experience for them specifically? Um, I think we, we, we do a good job here at, you know, really walking through the steps with people, especially when it comes to virtual or hybrid. Um, I've been on many like sit downs with Ryan as he goes through storyboarding calls and, you know, rehearsals and really flushes through each detail with them. Um, and I think that kind of relationship between, you know, ourselves and the client helps them to feel like they're heard, they're understood and, they can feel confident that the show is going to go really well. Absolutely. Well, and that confidence, I think, is really key, you know, for us and being able to deliver a, a positive experience. 
I'm, again, I'm, I'm sure experience is something you've heard us talk a lot, uh, a lot about, and it, it's always been a focus of ours is to make sure that the experience is good all the way right. through. And Joe, we were just talking, there's a project we're working on right now where maybe the group didn't have a good experience with a different vendor that they worked with, and we identified what those areas were, things that they weren't happy with, and specifically make sure to deliver on those things. And you know, that's kind of how we build that trust and we manage their expectations and then they show up and they know, all right, these are our team. This is our, you know, these are our people. And, uh, you know, and so you're, you're well on your way to, uh, you know, to being able to deliver that, that, you know, experience all the way through. I was actually, I was going to say, I've gotten to experience firsthand, you know, how these events go being on site the day of an event. I've gotten to see the success as they come to an end and the client's very happy. And then I've gotten to feel the results and, you know, you know, the kind messages we get, the thank you, the repeat clients. So experience, success, results, you know? Oh like my God. I didn't even know what she wow. was doing there for a second. I saw it coming. Wow. I thought you were going for the tagline, you know, like success. I was like, you blew it, you know, results. You, oh man, I think I blew she it too. She didn't blow it. She nailed it, Finn. <laughs> nailed it. Success you hear, results you see, TM, trademark. <laughs> You know, but I, I mean, the reality is we talk about these things all the time internally. We don't usually talk about them to our clients too much, but I think they they do know it because that is what what we're here to do. We're here to help them achieve their goals and so that they have a good experience along the way, because it's not just about the end result, but that certainly is the most important part of it. Right. But it's also, to you know, like you want to enjoy the people you're working with as well. Yep, I think that's come to more fruition for everybody in the last two years than anything else. Sure. And it, Ryan's hanging on by a thread, but I mean, you know, it's it's okay. Wow. Fortunately, he has great moments like this, <laughs> and that makes it all worthwhile. You know? uh, well, at least I bring something to the table, including incredibly gross, patchy facial hair whenever I let it go. But I don't do that anymore. That was a one-time deal. You know, I think, was it, Julia? it might have even been Julia that said, like, you have to get rid of it. No, you know, it was Hillary Millman. It was Hillary. Ah, and uh, from ADL. Yeah. There you go. ADL. And in better That's words. Marissa's at right now. She did it in much better words. And, and that, I think, was what sealed the deal. And I had to just get rid of it. But enough about me. So sad. So sad. Either way. Um, so, Alexa, what are the things that you think are really important to the nonprofit side, you know, so that maybe our team can actually learn a little bit more on how to deliver a better product. Um, in terms of virtual, like if they're staying virtual, I think it's really like the hand holding because if they're brand new to it, they're really nervous. Like I remember when we first did a virtual, we had no clue what we were doing. We were like, I don't know anything about this. So, uh, when we worked with you guys, actually, because I worked with you prior to working here, it was great to be able to, you know, ask questions, shoot a quick email. Hey, I don't understand this. Or how is this going to go? Sit on a call a couple of times, those kinds of things. Um, and for in person or hybrid, um, just knowing that they're really uh, financially driven, you know, how much money can they raise? So obviously we're not helping them financially, like with direct the money that's coming in, but having a good show and a good layout, it does help them to, you know, get to that result they're going to be at. So the people watching or the people who are there in person, they enjoy everything. They're not like, oh, I didn't like, you know, this about the show. They get that full experience and they really are able to enjoy themselves that night. Yeah, you, you touched on a good point there, and that is one of the nuanced differences between virtual and in-person in terms of the fundraising side. You know, we've, we've spoke about it, you know, on this show at length about how, you know, in the virtual fundraising uh, uh, setting, they may not see as much donation come in on that day, right? It's just a lot of it is more of a campaign leading up to the event. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in person, it is, and we've already seen this, you know, since uh, in the post pandemic world where, man, when you get that momentum going and, and right. the crowd engaged, they really do tend to, you know, outperform, um, you know, maybe a less uh, uh, momentous crowd. 
yeah. so so that's that's exactly it. You know, and that that really does speak to the value of what that in person uh, production level can do is to generate that excitement, like we exactly, said. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's nothing like in person, like to get that energy going and feeling everybody else's excitement. Like you said, it's much different. But I mean, you make do with what you can. If it has to be virtual, it has to be virtual. It's all uh, good. Alexa, do you have a preference? Are you an IRL person or a virtual person? Honestly, I mean, I think both are fine. They both work. I probably like in person just because it's, like I said, it's nice to be able to actually face-to-face -face talk to people. And I know a lot of our, our clients have said the same, you know, being back at events, they're very happy and they're almost like out of, jumping out of their seats because they want to talk to their neighbor so much. But I think the virtual has its own place and time and it's interesting as well. It's different, you know, it's just learning how those things interact as well. Absolutely. Well, and, and you would know because you're on your way to becoming a Zoom expert. That's right. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even know that was coming. We, we rehearsed that a few minutes ago. So. Okay. All right. That, that's, that's good. <laughs> well, Zoom, hop in, online galas. I mean, you got to learn them all. Yeah. got to learn them all. That's true. But we have time on that. You know, part of what we were talking about last week is the blend that we saw over the fall between virtual hybrid and in-person and what we saw was for the top 100 events we did 49 percent were in person 28 percent were hybrid and 23 percent virtual meaning it's basically a dead heat like it's 50 50 <laughs> which is you know is interesting but it, it's kind of gone in cycles you know and i know we've seen that in december specifically it's been again almost 50 percent um, virtual and 50% on the, uh, you know, in person, but totally different energy from either one of them. Um, you know, yesterday we're actually at the New York Hilton in Midtown Manhattan, and we just had our largest in-person event for the year. Actually, really since last, last February of 2020, to be honest. <laughs> to be um, very specific. <laughs> well, there is 900 people there. We haven't seen 900 people in a while. <laughs> you know, so, and uh, I mean, you know, the way they went about it, of course, New York City has different rules, but everyone had to show proof of vaccination before entering. And uh, everybody seemed very comfortable. They seemed to be having a very good time and a good experience all around. In that particular case, we did not stream anything because of the way ticket prices are tied to showing up in person. And the networking is a very important part of their event. So it, it goes back to the purpose of why you're holding the event and who you're looking to attract. And you do need to know your audience. And I think that's going to determine how the how the experience moves forward in the next, you know, six months to a year. Absolutely. Well, so, you know, speaking of in terms of where we are right now, Alexa, you, you've now just completed your first what we would call busy season where you know uh, again we're very typically very seasonal in the events world right spring and fall are really big and you know summer and winter we hope are not <laughs> nothing right yeah uh, but usually you know kind of drop off quite a bit so um any any kind of takeaways anything you noticed or or uh, anything that stuck out to you in terms of what a busy season looks like uh yeah i think the first takeaway i would say is ryan needs coffee in the morning correct but uh no it's just it's you know like you said it's go 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 like we have events um in the back where all of our operations people are i can go back and see the board and it's stacked you know very many events each day different things going on so it's definitely a different atmosphere and you know a different work pace but um we get it done and we get it done well so it, it's uh it's good to see the the slow and the fast you know, and then the in between as well. Well, now comes the all the planning. Now we plan again for yeah to kind of make sure that uh, everything is is one hundred percent solid for the next season. Right. But it's also thinking about you know you have to learn from what we just went through, right? And that that's mm -hmm. definitely all part of it. Uh, you know, Ryan, I don't know if you saw the comment section. Uh, I did. <laughs> Let's just say we're international. Okay. There we go. That's I mean, great so hear. now I have to uh, I have to throw a quick shout out. Gracias, Lorena. <laughs> Un gran abrazo para ti, Paul y Damien y Tito. Okay, vamos a verte muy pronto. 
We have family down in Ecuador, and obviously they're watching because this is the most interesting thing on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Not patting ourselves on the back, but we'll I mean, see you Wednesdays at one o'clock. Wednesdays at one o'clock. That's all we're saying. But uh, either way, well, Alexa, what what thoughts or questions do you have for us as we're you know six months in? I mean, is there something that we haven't covered on mm -hmm. our side? I mean, I started out here not knowing what a mixer was, not knowing what, you know, all these different items were in Flex, which we use to create these orders for people, these estimates. Um, so I think I've come a long way in terms of, I've asked a lot of questions. I've, I've annoyed Ryan over my shoulder. Ryan's, what's this mean? I mean, I still do it now, but mm -hmm. a little bit less frequently, I would say. So I think day by day, there's always something new for me to learn and there's something new for me to, you know, figure out on my own as well. How can I use this tool and how can I help, you know, advance corporate AV as well? And how can we change as a, as a whole? Well said, well said, you don't annoy me too much. Look, <laughs> I, Joe will tell you when I first started, I had questions like you wouldn't believe I knew nothing, obviously. Um, so, you know, you stick to the track, you stick to the, uh, what is it? Trust the pro trust the process. Hey, look, I have, these are my cheat sheets of, you know, what the uh, audio, the what the video, sheets. everything. There we go. That's valuable you know, speaking company intel. Right someone there. who needed cheat sheets. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Our friend, Ken Shioki. Ken Shioki. <laughs> over at Rentex. <laughs> he needed a cheat sheet for a little while. Now look at him. He's doing great. There we go. He's doing great. He's going to be coming on our show soon. Ah. He, he couldn't make it today. So we'll, we'll see him soon. All right. Well, hello. Rentex is one of our one of our big suppliers for things. Yes. Great company. Nice people to work with. Absolutely. Well, look, Brian, I don't know how much more we want to put Alex on the spot. I, <laughs> no, you know, I've been holding back all my tough questions, but uh, I think we can spare her. I know. Right, Ken? Wow. I, I, this is what I'm saying. Like, this is international. This is so big. <laughs> Alexa is attracting a global audience. <laughs> I, I that, just need Marissa here with me. It might be the point really... set in the penguin. I'm not sure. Finch, have you seen the penguin? I haven't noticed the penguin. See, I, yet. I can't on. go all Jim Harlow because this, I, this thing might uh, it might pull. Oh, yeah. oh God, this. that would be such a good video to pull onto the show. I know. Right? I don't know why. The, be the beginning of virtual for us, and we just get that little bit. Uh, I'm not even going to tease it too much. There's going to no, be a video coming find. next week. We got to find it. it. It's a classic <laughs> clip, though. It is. So stay tuned. Next week, one o'clock Wednesday. Well, wow, I wasn't ready. You didn't tell me. <laughs> well, look, then I, I think we'll um, I think we'll probably. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not right, Will. Oh, the, oh there we go. Nice, pe nice, pen them. nice penguin. There you go. We've been penguin. we've been uh, teaching Will all the cool slang. All the that lingo. The kids are saying these days. Yeah, I learn something new every day with the what the kids are saying, Joe. Uh, IRL. Yeah, Will calls yeah. it the kid corner. OMG. Yeah. OMG, IRL, there yeah. you go. Smash the subscribe button. Wow, I wasn't ready. I know, got it I was in there. close, I was close. But either way, I think we're going to wrap up for today. Alexa, thank you very much. You know, you've been a real pleasure. You've really brought a lot of uh, warmth and personality thank to you. our team. Yeah. Right in my face. Right in my face with that. I'm, I'm so, it's hold on, hold on, Ryan. Let's just think about this for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh, God. I mean... Do you see how he overly exaggerated this part right and here? And so for all of you out there, that <laughs> was a recording going, I wasn't on the call with anyone. You're seeing unadulterated me by myself thinking about something. So I, <laughs> I, feel, like, I feel like that needs to be said, okay? I wasn't doing it for the effect. Wow. I'm just a very pensive, pensive gentleman. I can't that means it. that literally all day by yourself you were doing it. I, I was doing it thing. far too much, far too much. And it was well, very uncomfortable. You're pleased. Not, That's not, all. not really, but no it's well. okay. But uh, I think we're going to wrap up for this mm -hmm. week because we do have uh, a number of events to prepare for, mm -hmm. but we wanted to make sure that, you know, we could celebrate Alexa's six months. We're going to celebrate Marissa's six months very soon. Muy pronto. Muy pronto. Right the second she has real work to do instead of just messing around with us. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks like a Yeti. Okay. Hold Thank on. You keep, to my... Can you keep that comment up there for a second? <laughs> Oh yeah. my God. Uh, yes. Thank, yeah. thank you to my soon to be bride. <laughs> Apparently has very nice, uh, very nice thoughts of how I used to look. 
I mean, not for nothing, but I just got to bring up that both of my co-hosts today are getting married next year. It's pretty big. <laughs> it's pretty big. That's all I'm going to say. If you guys could, if you could high five. Let's see how long this is going to oh, take. Ah, nailed it. <laughs> see, that was good. That was good. Either way. Well, we'll, uh, oh, okay. So no longer, oh, Bond villain. Nice. There are a lot of comments. This is what the comments section is for. Engagement. This is what we're looking for. Exactly Thank you. Drop for. us a comment. Be part of the show. Because we already said we have no script. <laughs> So Not for nothing, but you all let us down a little bit. Your comments to actually feel the show. But either way, good stuff. Yes. Well, let's, uh, Alexa, thank you for your time. We're going to go into our normal wrap up. And, uh, I know what that means. That means you're going to go bye bye. We're going to see you on the other side. Right now, you're virtually, virtually present. Soon, see you're going to be in person present. And this is so exciting. I can't wait. Bye. She's Sheesh. good. She's really good. I got to say, I Indeed. think that she could be taking my spot very soon. Oh, wow. So this is your exit strategy. I see what you're doing. I don't know. I mean, it could be the Kids Corner show. We could be renaming <laughs> it. <laughs> Thursdays, 2 p.m. Kids Corner. I mean, we'll Sheesh. have to make it turn, you know, so that there's nap time. But I mean, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> that, wait, hold on. Can we talk about that? Because that actually sounds like a great idea. <laughs> wow. Look. Wow. No talent. Wow. Oh that's tough. God. That's tough. Marlo is killing us on the other side there. Damn. Holy mackerel. Wow. wow. All right. Even though I got to say, I did like Ricky Ricardo. He was really funny. You probably don't even know who that oh, is. Oh, Ricky. Come All on. Right. Okay. That's give me good. a little credit. All, All right. right. I'll give you a little. Just a little. That's nice. All right, Ryan, let's uh, let's take us out of here. we got to go back to work, man. Okay. Very good. Well, as always... Uh, or as usual, uh, Wednesdays, 1 p.m. You can find us right here on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Nailed it. There we go. And while you're there, drop us a comment, drop us a like, share, subscribe, all the above. Much appreciated. Show us some love. And, uh, you know, of course, engage. Drop us a comment in the show, and we will bring you into wow. the show, just like we did with these lovely commenters today. And if you have questions, we can answer them. This is the power of virtual. So wow. I, I wanted and, to and, just kind of expand on it for a second. Virtual. We heart, we the, heart virtual. the virtual. The virtual. That, that didn't feel right. No, it's so bad. Nope. It's, gonna... I think the penguin's fault, really. But yeah, well, you can blame whoever you want. but It's kind of like, uh, I think it was Billy Madison. Yeah, that penguin was so evil. Uh, I can't everybody remember. watch Billy Madison. I've seen it many it's times. It's a funny show. You need to watch part. it. Let's, All right. You need to see the penguin. All right. Well, look, we're going Let's off the rails here. We're out. It's time to go. Bye, everyone. See you later. Thank you.